Uh, very sadly, uh, your report on page 208 says that Mr. Biden couldn't come up with the date, the year of his son, Bo Biden's death. When, in fact, in the transcript, it shows that you asked him the month. And do you know what he said, Mr. Herr? He said, oh, God, May 30th. Would you like to correct the record? His memory was pretty firm on the month and the day. Congresswoman, I don't believe that's correct with respect to the transcript. But if you could refer me to a specific page, I'd be happy to look. I, I've read about it in reporting. <laughs> Just to catch him strays over here. <laughs> You're in for a hell of a show. Keep the faith. <laughs> Hold the line and own the libs. It's time for our main. <laughs> I read about it and reported. Yeah. Like, um, imagine you have a special prosecutor before your committee and you don't even read the transcript. You're like, no, I saw on the Daily Beast that you're wrong, sir. <laughs> that you are wrong. Just going off the top of my head here. I mean, how do these people get elected? It is just like truly an indictment of yeah. where we're at in society when somebody like that can actually have a seat to question somebody like Robert Hur. Right. You know, uh, welcome back to the Ruthless Variety program. Thanks, fellas, for holding it down. Yeah. Uh, it's Smug and Duncan. Mm -hmm. uh, really much appreciated. Great show, by the way. Thank Whitlock you. was terrific. Yeah, yeah, he was. Very nice to have him on. Yeah, great friend of the program. A great friend of the program. And I'm, I'm pleased to see, Ashbrook, that you are uh, feeling better up yeah. and around. Yeah. No, mo Monday I was feeling kind of rough, but yeah. uh, Smug came in here and tried to dunk on me anyway within 30 <laughs> seconds of the show. And I was like, I okay, fast forward. I think we'll give him another forward. chance. We'll give him every, another chance. Every time folks. Smug started talking, I just fast forwarded to Whitlock <laughs> every single time. I was like, I need to learn something on this show. But, but Whitlock did a, a terrific job. <laughs> Out, <laughs> outstanding guest. I got a hot tip for you about feeling better on Mondays. It's probably not drinking a cask of bourbon on Sundays. Mm. Pal, if that's how I spent my Sunday, I would have been happy to do it that way. <laughs> I had so much kid stuff this yeah. weekend, and I think I caught something from, um, I think I caught something Saturday in an all-day kids event that I, I was at. So. I saw your all-day kids event, and let's just say it was amazing. You were a judge in something. And, I, I was uh, a judge. That's right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, wish, was... I wish we could go into detail because I have a lot of observations to make about all of that. But uh, in the interest of our listener who tuned in to hear about the world's news, mm -hmm. maybe we should get to that. Uh, af off the top there, that was well, – who's the idiot congresswoman? Was Dean. Rob, Rob Dean. Yeah. I don't know who the hell she is. But anyway, she's uh, – this was the hearing this week – that uh, Robert Hur, the special counsel who oversaw President Biden's handling of classified documents, uh, appeared before Congress and was asked a series of questions. You recall that there has been a lot of controversy because in his report, uh, the primary reason that he didn't charge President Biden was because he didn't think he was mentally competent <laughs> enough to actually recall whether he had any sort of like malfeasant intent about how he handled the documents. And to do that, he also illustrated that there were like many major life events, like the death of his son, that he didn't recall dates and whatnot. And when this all came out, of course, he didn't charge him with it. Uh, that was the reason for not charging him. But when it came out, the Biden uh, campaign, the administration and the president himself then expressed outrage. Yeah. A complete indignation. And, Outrage. I mean, it's insane that, like, so the, the death of his son is a perfect example of of where things are on, on, on this subject, where during that disastrous press conference, Biden's like, how dare he bring that up? I got that, you know, right. I, 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 I knew exactly what I'm talking about. It was actually, now we see, Biden himself who brought it up, well, and he got it wrong. Let's, let's show the clip so everybody can, can recall exactly the way that President Biden phrased all of that. That's 2A. Spaghetti. I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died. Every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of 
Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away or passed away. So that clip is relevant because what he's doing there is suggesting that in the report, which was levied against him, that he didn't recall the names and the dates, was essentially accusing Robert Hur of going way outside the bounds of the investigation to ask him personal, meaningful things that offended him mm -hmm. by nature. And that this was an offensive sort of like uh, antagonistic interview. Yeah. Well, it turns out the transcript came out too. Mm -hmm. And the transcript shows that it wasn't actually Robert Hur who raised the entire prospect of Bo, Bo's death, or anything else. It was President Biden himself. Yeah. Which, Michael, I think what we've been talking about here tells us more about Joe Biden than almost anything else in the entire investigation into classified documents, yep. the Bo Biden impeachments or the, the Hunter Biden stuff, the impeachment stuff. Like to me, this is the most revealing character mm -hmm. moment that we have seen today. Americans for Prosperity has done it again. You're gonna love this. Know how Biden's been running around the country bragging about Bidenomics and the media is doing stories on how the president has embraced the term? Well, guess what? Americans for Prosperity just bought the Bidenomics.com domain name. I can't believe the White House didn't get this first. This would be like Pepsi buying Coca-Cola.com. It's hilarious. Bidenomics.com sets the record straight on the failures of Joe Biden's economy, his horrible record on cost of living, wages, debt, deficits, energy, and more. I've been to the site. I can tell you, it's not what Joe Biden wants Americans to see. AFP takes Biden's own words and compares them to the reality of everyday Americans. It's packed with facts and stories that prove Bidenomics is a costly failure. Americans for Prosperity deserves a lot, a lot of credit for this coup. Visit Bidenomics.com soon, the website Joe Biden doesn't want you to see. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, so just for the, for the record here, so Joe Biden is saying that her raised the issue of Bo Biden. Yeah. That is not true. Rep Dean, Madeline Dean there in the congressional hearing is saying Biden got it right. So let's just correct the record with the transcript as it is. This uh, from the Hills article. <clears throat> her had asked Biden about, you know, the Penn Biden Center, the Cancer Moonshot, his memoir, other projects he was working on in 2017. Right. Just just trying to get a sense of like what was going on at the time. All it places is, where these documents exist. Correct. Yeah. Joe Biden raises, quote, remember, in this time frame, my son is either been deployed or is dying. And so it was. And by the way, there were still a lot of people at the time when I got out of the Senate that were encouraging me to run this period, except the president, yada, yada, yada. And so what was happening, though? What month did Bo die? Oh, God, May 30th. Here's the problem with that. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. An identified male in the room chimed in to note that was in 2015, two years prior. This is what Biden says. Was it 2015 he had died? Biden asked, which an aide confirmed. It was 2015, Biden continued. Yeah. So he didn't know. He did not know the year that Bo died. Well, no, furthermore, I mean, he was actually using the chaotic nature that surrounds the death of a son or any loved to one. To excuse his behavior. To excuse his behavior, because what her was actually talking about was, why is it that you knowingly possess classified documents in all of these areas that you had work and projects and all these things going on? And he was like, oh, I had a lot going on, basically. Yeah, and my like, son is dying. My son, son is either deployed or he's dying. When, in fact, he died two years before the time that they were talking which about. Is, which is now obviously a thing he does quite often, because as, the, as we saw in the clip, we just played. We just played. He's, again, using his son as a shield from criticism yep. of the special uh, prosecutor that maybe he did something wrong in this. How dare he? How dare he raise Bo Biden? He didn't raise it. Joe Biden is just a complete fucking liar. And what a scumbag yep. to hide behind the death of his son to excuse his own behavior and all of this and lie 
on national television to the American people about the circumstances in which this question was asked. It's fucking despicable. And Joe Biden has a record of doing this for 40 years. Yes. I mean, he lied about the guy who got in the accident with his wife and killed his wife and his son, said he was liquored up and, you know, never skipped a drink at lunch. That was a fucking lie. The person wasn't drunk. And Joe Biden never publicly apologized for lying. He's done this his entire career. The guy's a complete fucking snake. I just I cannot believe he gets a pass for this sort of behavior. It is galling. Well, That's the thing is, uh, when Holmes said that that question, that moment is so defining of the character that we have here, the, the character of Joe Biden. It is because his entire career has been trying to farm sympathy to cover for his lies. Like the whole myth of, oh, mm -hmm. that's nice old Grandpa Joe. It's Uncle Joe. He's a nice guy. It's all a bunch of lies. Like this guy has... In, uh, Doug is, is despicable the way that he has used the death of a family member to try to shield all the things that he's done wrong to be off by two years and then go on national TV and lie to the American in people. The and the media covers for it real quick, yep. uh, Ashbrook. The, you want to know the title of that Hill article I was reading from? The title is Her Transcript Shows Nuance of Bo Biden oh, Exchange. Nuance. Yeah. Just a little nuance. They've, they've always covered for him because he's a Democrat. If Joe Biden were a Republican, his political career would have been over in 1988 when he plagiarized yeah. another person's <laughs> yep. campaign. Yep. I mean, this is, this is a guy who is the quintessential Democrat that gets boosted over and over again by a press that does well whatever their side wants. But let's take him at his word, right? I mean, because the argument that the White House and President Biden himself are making is that by no means is he not of sound mind, that he is thoughtful mm -hmm. and full of vigor, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, then it's worse. It's a lot worse. Like, I, honestly, at this point, I would straddle the line if you're in the White House comms and you'd be like, I don't know, maybe we should just go with the dementia thing. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, well, it's like Joe Biden said at the State of the Union. Sometimes I wish I was cogn cognitively, <laughs> you know, impaired. I mean, but like, if he's not cognitively impaired, and if like these timelines and everything that he doesn't remember are actually intentional, what he's trying to do is obfuscate criminal liability in a criminal investigation by folding in complete. Untruths. Yeah. So, you know, we can deal with a criminal investigation into classified documents. You could also add perjury to that fucking charge. Yeah. If this if it's not true, if what Robert Hur is talking about and excusing him of the crime itself because he couldn't prove intent because of his cognitive abilities, if that is thrown out, then he's actually worse. It's not just the crime of of the documents. It's mm -hmm. perjury. It is. Uh, obstruction of an investigation. Well, so, that's so, that... and, and that's the stuff I want to get to here first. We got a whole bunch of clips to play for you. And I think it, to buttress your argument here, Holmes, we should skip ahead here to clip number three. Can we play clip three, Spaghetti? Classified documents were found at the Penn Biden Center? That's correct. They were found in President Biden's garage? In Wilmington, Delaware, yes. And in his basement den? Also in the same home, yes. In the major, in his main floor office? Correct. And his third floor den? Correct. At the University of Delaware? Correct. And at the Biden Institute? Correct. Okay. Oh! Okay, so there's an intent to have these documents a number of places, I would say. Well, it's weird to not have intent in seven different places. Right. <laughs> right? right. Like, wild. Like, one's a goof. One's a goof. Two, two's, oh, geez, I made another mistake. <laughs> you know, but it, it, it reminds me of Sandy Berger. You remember when he Stuff had the documents down in his, his pants? BVDs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so good. So, so, but I wanted to get on one more thing. Forgot one, about that. One more thing you mentioned there, Holmes, which is the obstruction component of this, which I think is significant and has not gotten nearly enough attention because there's been so much news about this. Let's play clip number four. Did the White House get the report before the report was made public? We did provide a draft of the report to the White House Counsel's Office and members of the President's personal counsel team for their re review. No, I understand. And did the White House then, once they got the report before it went public, did the White House try to weigh in with, with your investigation on elements of that report and, frankly, get the report changed? They did request certain edits and changes to the draft report. Okay. Wow. Ooh. Okay. I thought this was an independent prosecutor. Well, it says here it was a special <laughs> counsel. I thought the special part of the counsel piece meant it was independent yeah. from the Department of Justice itself. In fact, 
by definition, what a special mm-hmm. counsel is, is someone that the White House can't control. It's sort of strange that their first move is like, hey, can you edit this thing? It's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, wonder, how, maybe they've done that before. How, how many articles did we have to read, Ashbrook, over the course of the Trump administration about, you know, Trump official X, quote, pressured Robert Mueller's investigation to do Y? You know what I mean? Like, if this is the sort of like if this was happening during the Trump administration, we'd have wall to wall cable news coverage about it. Yeah. But they just sort of just gloss all over that. It's absolutely no. Fine. I mean, we don't. It's not even as you said. It's not a headline, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that line of questioning should be a front page story yes. in and of itself. But what was so funny. So I, 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 a friend of mine is somebody who has known and worked with Robert Herr, and he texted me out of the blue when Biden made those comments, and was like. Buddy, they don't know the world of hurt that they just walked into. Mm. This dude is a very by the book prosecutor, Seems and he like crosses it. every T and dots every I. And if they're going to question his integrity, trust me, some point that transcript's going to come out. At some point, he's going to answer questions to it, and the White House is not going to love that. Yeah. Sure enough, it was like Nostradamus. I mean, th- a month later, this whole thing comes out. Biden looks as bad as anything that I have seen during the course of his presidency. Mm-hmm. Like, other than raising fucking terrible kids and dogs. Mm-hmm. Like, this is it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Well, and and the, the Democrats up there in the hearing didn't make it any easier for Joe Biden. In fact, they, like, owned themselves constantly through you know throughout this entire hearing. Completely. And we have a couple of perfect examples of that. Uh, Spigatz, let's go to clip one. Warranted in this matter. Correct. So this lengthy, expensive, and independent investigation resulted in a complete exoneration of President Joe Biden. For every document you discussed in your report, you found insufficient evidence that the president violated any laws about possession or retention of classified materials. The primary law that you analyzed for potential prosecution was part of the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. 793E, which criminalizes willful retention or disclosure of national defense information. Is that correct? Congresswoman, that is one statute that we analyzed. I need to um, go back and, and make sure that I take take note of the word that you used, uh, exoneration. That Mr. is not a word Her, that I'm going to continue with my questions. I'm going to continue with my questions. I know that, that I the term that I ultimately reached I know that whether the term, sufficient evidence existed such that the likely you outcome you, you exonerated would be a conviction. Him. I know that, that the term willful that retention report, has a p- Mr. Hurd, it's my time. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that that the shoe's finally on the other foot here on all of this. You know, because obviously Donald Trump pushed back on all of the crazy stuff that they were trying to do to him when he was president of the United States, right? Yeah. And they made fun of him when he would say the exonerated thing. Yeah, totally and now exonerated. they're they find themselves in the barrel and they're like, Nope. Exonerated. Exonerated. But but to your point, if you hadn't watched the hearing for yourself or had listened had read um anything other than the mainstream media, you would not have drawn that impression. Let me read you a couple of headlines. Mm -hmm. This is another one from The Hill. Robert Herr trashed by Dems, comma, (laughs) GOP over Biden age report. Another one, Business Insider. Special counsel transcript offers glimpse at Joe Biden's wry humor. (laughs) I mean, that's the thing is, like, the, the, the media lies to the public. And these elected officials, uh, how disgusting is it that you have Rep. Jayapal, who's essentially trying to hide the truth. Right. The guy who did the report, who did the investigation, is trying to say and enter into the record, I never said exonerated. Exonerated does not appear at all in the report. She's like talking over him so the public can't hear him tell the truth. And she says, "Uh, it's my time to talk. Let me read from a headline of a news outlet that only heard Pramila Jayapal's side of things. <laughs> this is CNN. Top news outlets acknowledge hers characterization of Biden's mental state didn't match reality. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Very insightful That's Oliver Darcy, transcription. CNN. Yeah. Oliver Darcy. <laughs> yeah. Look for him in Hack Madness, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Look for him. He's going to be high seed this year. Um what was so funny, and, and I just have to make mention, it's not in our documents here, but I have to make mention, what they're talking about with the wry humor mm-hmm. was that as her is trying to actually ask real questions, there's diatribes and there are huge tangents that Biden is going on. And in one of them, it, it, he talks about a, a, like a Mongolian case where he represented somebody whose penis was cut off. Yeah. And like... <clears throat> 
I read the transcript and I was like, I got to make sure it's not a goof. Like I had to go to the actual, <laughs> yeah. the file to make sure that like that actually was a thing and not something you just see on the internet. Uh, no, yep. He was fully talking about a guy whose twig and berries got cut off. And and he was like, that was just part of his discussion with the special counsel about his own. I, I heard at one point. He, just a wry he, sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> fully in control of the conversation. At one point, he was just making <laughs> making car noises. Car noises. Yeah. Car noises. Vroom. He forgot the word for fax machine. You know, just wry humor. <laughs> Not a guy losing I remember his mental. One time, I remember one time with my penis. Uh, I was reverent as that a penis got cut off and sent it in a testicle. Vroom! <laughs> like, okay, Mr. President, can we get back to the the documents, please, for one moment? So, but we're not done with the Democrat embarrassing themselves. Uh, our, one of our favorites here on the Ruthless Variety program, Jerry Nadler. Mm. Terrible guy. Just an absolutely caricature mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, well, you'll see. A sandwi clip, clip sand two, sandwich connoisseur. <laughs> At any point in your investigation... Do you have any reason to believe that President Biden lied to you? I do address in my report one response the president gave uh, to a question that we had posed to him that we deemed to be not credible. Mm. Oh, well, sorry you asked that one, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Like, shit. Isn't that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's the best part. You mean they always tell young lawyers, like, never ask a question that you don't already know the answer exactly. to? Exactly. And, like, this is the guy who's been in Congress, I don't know, 175 years, and he rolls into this guy, like, her is some rook mm. who's, yeah. like, shook by right. Jerry Nadler. He's like, right. hey, did, did, Biden surely did never lie to you, did he? He's, He's like, like I, no, he did. Yeah, uh-huh. In fact, he did. Yep. Thank he you. Absolutely did. <laughs> Thank you for the question. And once again, uh, it's because of his incompetency that I haven't charged him with that. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very tough for us to know that he lied because he's... So mentally, mentally declined, we can't be sure of his guilt. I mean, it's just such a stunning deal. And, yeah. and the fact that all of this plays out, and yet the beat goes on. Yeah. The beat goes on. We're all going to pretend like this isn't what we're dealing with here? That's the thing. is like you saw uh, the White House trot out that clown, Ian Sams, being like, oh, uh, today we saw uh, Joe Biden was completely exonerated. No. Again. <laughs> no. The person who did the investigation says, please listen to me. I never use the word exonerated. It's important that I note that he was not exonerated. And the White House is hoping they can essentially they're trying to run the clock out. Mm -hmm. They think, OK, if we can keep this guy alive for a few more months, if we can get our billionaires to just give a pile of money, if we can get enough lawsuits against Donald Trump, we can cross the finish line. That's their whole strategy here. That's it. They just want to run clock. I want to read two other things that were in the transcript that we don't have audio of that you just need to hear. Perfect. So over the course of the two-day interview, which took place immediately in the aftermath of the October 7 Hamas attack on Israel, Biden repeatedly asked for help remembering certain important dates. And his lawyer frequently stepped in. Quote, when did I announce for president? <laughs> yes. If it was 2013... When did I stop being vice president? Unquote. Boy. In 2009, am I still vice president? Unquote. Quote, Trump gets elected in November of 2017. Unquote. Biden asked before someone noted it was 16. Twice on the same day, Biden struggled to find the words for fax machine. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, <laughs> you see where there's a printer and there's a, what do they call it? The machine that, uh, and then he asked the White House counsel, Ed uh, Siskel, who offered up a fax machine mm -hmm. in both instances, uh, which, by the way, fax probably machine. have not been used since 2004. The uh, telex. I mean, <laughs> you see the carrier pigeons. I mean, can you just think of the comedy, witnessing this in real life? And I, f I feel like as Americans... If we have to suffer through this guy as Might president well of the United States, we should have cameras behind the scenes that produce a Netflix special, like a 30 for 30, yeah. a video of him asking these 30, ludicrous yeah. questions. Can you imagine so that being someday his we counsel, can actually by the way? Watch that. Like, we've all, all joked, and I do think it's funny to think about no. what it would be like to be, like, Donald Trump's counsel. Because, you know, in those depositions that we've seen videos of where, he, we, like, he's just— we would advise no client to right. talk about what he's talking about. We I always get a kick out of like imagining what's in their head at that time. But honestly, what is in the head of of Joe Biden's legal counsel 
is all that's going on. I mean, yeah. I think it's essentially just like a nurse or a caretaker. Well, see, that's that's the thing that I think would be so funny, <laughs> Smug, is remember during the Trump administration, we got like an anonymously penned thing in the New York Times, Washington Post, or whatever, it was like, you know, we are the resistance within the Trump White House. Like, we're the guardrails of democracy. Oh, this was this was the fuck. The, what does this um, asshole's uh, name? Miles Taylor. Yeah, this the was the D- DHS was, guy. Uh, what was it? It was uh, Halloween's and pandemics. Yeah. That's oh, the yeah. one. I don't wear. <laughs> but like, what is it like? He didn't. He didn't costumes. Uh, I don't wear uh, Halloween's and pandemics. Oh yeah, that, that was when <laughs> oh, masks. he, he got masks. masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he denied. I think on Anderson Cooper or something that he was in fact anonymous and kind of got called out on national television. Yeah. But that's sort of an aside. What I want, <laughs> what I want, what I want is that I want the, the version of that for the Biden White House where it's like, we are the hospice staff within the <laughs> Biden White House. And it's like, I just want to assure the American people, like the, the pudding, the pudding fridge is stocked. The ice cream's at the ready. This man is ready to serve. Dad is being treated humanely. Yeah. With passion. Yeah. And all and he has to do is hit, hit a button, folks. People, I mean, look, he, there's no greater care <laughs> than we find here at a place for dad at the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, oh, it's just so bad. Well, we're, I mean, look, you're going to hear more and more out of this, but the reason we're making a big deal out of it at the top of the show, and we realize it was yesterday's news, but the reason we're doing that is because everybody just blows through it. Yep. Mm-hmm. But this is, in my mind, an ex- a extremely significant moment of demarcation because you've got, like, arguments on both sides and very muddy water on impeachment and whether – Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, like Joe Biden got paid off Hunter Biden. Like we all know that they're influence peddling. We get that. That's like in the documents we've already got. But there's like, it's muddy water. Mm -hmm. Character reveals itself Mm -hmm. clearly in several different ways. And the idea that you go before the American people to suggest that a special counsel who's interviewing you was way out of line by asking you a question that he never asked. Yeah. And to use your dead son and as a defense. And to use yep. yeah. your deceased son is not only a defense in that forum, mm-hmm. but in the forum that you were originally asked a series of questions that had nothing to do with them right. to try to get out of culpability of an actual crime that's being investigated. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he, done, he done it deliberate. Like, that's... That's right. That is where character reveals itself. Yeah. Right? So, like, for those of you who think, like, A, I disagree with everything that Joe Biden does, but, like, he seems like a pretty good guy... Let me assure you, he's not. Yep. He's just not. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So we got a really big show on tap in front of you. You know how Wolf likes to get to the meat right up. Yeah. Top. Yeah. Well, it was good. It's good meat. Yeah, it was good meat. But we're going to get to a whole bunch more. We've got King of the Hill coming back because it's thirsty. That's right. And that's what we do. Uh, Congressman Buck from Colorado uh, resigned, mm. meaning the GOP majority at this point, is like uh, one. I think I think we're at one. One. We should I, honestly. We should get a scoreboard, right there. That's like GOP majority. It's Today just is like, at bing, 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 one. We're at one, folks. At this point, they're praying for the health and well-being of every single Republican member of Congress because that is the difference between the current speaker and Speaker Jeffries. Yeah, honestly. Good God. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this TikTok thing. Uh, get you up to speed on all of that. And we've got some animal news and some variety in the back end. But uh, we will get to all of that and returning with King of the Hill right after this. At Ruthless, we love this country and its amazing history. Defending our values means remembering where we came from. There's no better way to connect with history than to hold a piece of it in your hand. For over 20 years, our great sponsor at CSN Mint has offered a wide variety of certified U.S. Mint collectible coins, and precious metals. For example, right now they're offering a Morgan silver dollar that was struck in 1878, a 140-year-old piece of American history you can have as your own. Coins hold both intrinsic and historic collectible value. While stacking silver in the form of bars or rounds holds an intrinsic value of the metal, coins, particularly certified coins, hold additional value as historic collectibles. So explore CSN Mint's extensive catalog of bullion bars, coins, and historic collectibles. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a passionate collector, you'll find a diverse range of products to suit your needs and preferences. At CSN Mint, trust is paramount. Every product you purchase includes the original Certificate of Authenticity, 
or certified and graded by a third-party grader to ensure origin and purity. With CSN Mint, you can build your collection with confidence. Experience world-class customer service and support with CSN Mint. Their team of knowledgeable professionals is available to assist you every step of the way, from product to selection, to order fulfillment and beyond. Own a piece of our great American history. Go to csnmint.com slash ruthless and use promo code ruthless at checkout to get a free silver American eagle over $30 in value with your purchase of $75 or more. All right, folks, it's Thursday, and there are players involved in King of the Hill. I believe I'm a participant. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Smug, you're a defending champ, correct? That's right. I am uh, bringing Joe Walsh to the fight today. Joe Walsh. Oh, Smoke and Joe. Smoke and Joe. Uh, and Holmes, who are you bringing? Max Boot. Oh, the boot. Yeah, we haven't seen seen him Maximum in a long time. Maximum boot. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. But you've been good with him in the past. I well, I, you know, I like his stuff. It, look, it's a, it's a pretty thin... A narrow area where he f- focuses his attention, mm-hmm. but at certain times, it's quite consequential. And so I think I found one of those times. Great. Uh, well, let's go ringside. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. It's time for King of the Hill. In the blue corner, fighting out of the front in the Ukraine. Maximum war now, boot. <laughs> and now, in the red corner, fighting under the shadow of his former political career and current champion of the world, Smoking Joe Walsh. All right. Beautiful. I, I guess I'm judge here today. or is, Am I judge or is Ashbrook judge? I think you're judge. You're judge. It's bailiff uh, Ashbrook. Are we guy. sure about I that? I don't. I don't remember. I, was, I don't. Well, who's the last one that. to participate? Don't you cycle into the bailiff and then the judge? That's how it works. You're judge. Yeah, I was bailiff, I think. Judge yeah, Duncan. Yeah, so I think it's <clears> Judge <throat> Duncan, a very handsome judge indeed. Buttering and, and me up. And it's it's the uh, the OG judge. Yeah. Sort of the, the Wapner. That's right. Of the court. The Clarence Thomas <laughs> of the variety program. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, round one goes to our defending champion, Smug. What do you got for us? This is Joe Walsh uh, making an insane claim. What exhibit do we have here? This is, uh, can I get exhibit two, please? Thanks for that reminder. Mm -hmm. Joe Walsh saying, I'm a Tea Party conservative, no longer Republican. Yes, I'm supporting Joe Biden, first off. I mean, that's it right there. (laughs) Honestly, that's the tweet. I'm a Tea Party conservative supporting Joe Biden, who spent six trillion plus on driving up inflation I salute you, Mr. Tea Party, Joe Walsh. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's really uh, that's really something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to come up with uh, Exhibit 8, please, Spaghetti. Exhibit 8, Max Boot says, The Kremlin's intervention to help Trump secure the razor-thin 2016 election could turn out to be the most consequential covert actions in history. It might allow Putin to win Washington a victory his troops could not win on the battlefield. Oh, my God. And that's old and stale. Wait, no, are you that kidding? That could be a take from... No yep, that's old and stale. way. It's only old and stale because we actually know the truth and the fact that he's going back to this well. First of all, the Kremlin's covert, recall that what he's talking about is $100,000 of Facebook ads, mm-hmm. right? Their help to secure a razor-thin 2016 election. So that's like, again, the old saw of That's Max right. Boot it is the old one. Else. It's the old saw. But consequential covert actions in history yes definitely way more important than like i don't know the atomic bomb i mean are you fucking kidding me i mean like we're, the we're, melodrama we're, we're, we're talking is... about tea party patriots for biden like this doesn't <laughs> so, come close so uh i disagree with you smug about that this is a stale take you know as as holmes sort of alluded to there it's like he's now combining the 2016 like Russiagate stuff <laughs> with now like Putin's invasion of Ukraine currently. Yes. 
and like the idea that like what what Putin's master master plan was to, was to like elect Donald Trump, right? <laughs> So this guy that's his, pu his puppet. Then he's going to wait until Donald Trump is no longer president. Ostensibly a president that would like let him do anything under Max Boots' uh, ide idea of the world. So he like he goofs and he forgets to invade Ukraine while Donald Trump is his puppet there as president. Invades when Biden's president. And now it's like, now I just got to get Donald Trump back in. That's the real long con. Well, of it's this. a six-year pl eight yeah, year plan. Eight-year really. plan. Yeah, eight, eight year an eight-year plan. Eight year plan. And, uh, Which is, um, gosh, that's wonderful. He also predicted that he would uh, run and lose, and then uh, run again. Yeah, as a eighty-year-old. I just thought maybe Putin's got a, you know, DeLorean. <laughs> uh, but tea, tea Party conservative to Joe Biden is just such an on its face banger. I got to give Walsh round one. Oh, yeah, let's go. Oh, I'm devastated. That's tough for me because you know that you 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 hit the judge with like I hit where I thought it yeah, hurt. Yeah, it's true. Oh man, okay, I need to reset the decks. A little Tea bit. Party I conservative I for Joe bag. Biden. I mean, that's incredible. I, to be honest, I'm not surprised by any of that shit anymore. Like, really? No, I feel like most of those dudes are like just sort of mercenaries. Hmm. They rode whatever wave they thought they could get into. It's like. Was Joe Walsh really that serious about spending? You well, know what I mean? Like, look at his, look at his congressional not. record. <laughs> not great. Not great. Okay. Um, I got to sort through a couple of different things here, and I'm trying to figure out what my best foot forward is. And I think I got it. Okay. I'm going to go with Exhibit 6. Fiona Hill. You guys remember that name? Fiona yeah. Hill? Mm. Fiona Hill, the Russia expert on Trump's NSC. <laughs> it's just like that in and of itself should win. Uh, told me Trump has been marinated in primordial soup of Russian <laughs> propaganda. She said that Trump knew a lot of wealthy Russians in South Florida <laughs> and they convinced him that Ukraine isn't a real country. <laughs> That's like one trick pony. One oh, trick pony. No, no. It's a pretty good trick, though. That's a one trick pony. So, so first off, uh, that Trump doesn't know that Ukraine is a, a real country, like he was impeached over it. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, like he called over there he, when he was talking it to was the perfect, president. Perfect call of that country. That was a perfect call. Uh, I think at that point he became aware it was an actual country. Mm -hmm. Right. And like the idea that they're just a bunch of stray wealthy Russians running around South Florida who are like, "Hey, it's not a real country." He's like, "You're right." Got it. That's, that's well, I, I I think the funniest part is the idea that Fiona Hill somehow I, like pl plugged in to like the ongoing you know day to day of Donald Trump. That is for me where this whole thing is like hitched. Yeah. Fiona Hill was a British American foreign affairs specialist and author, mm. and was a witness in the 2019 House hearings regarding the impeachment inquiry of. Donald Trump. I mean, if you have to sit, like read an essay to explain your tweet. Well, I just want to give the context of who he's talking yeah. about with Fiona Hill. Right. Like, this is not some you person. Might to, uh, you who... might want to talk to the bailiff about enforcing time. Yeah, here. bailiff. Well, the ba bailiff's doing his great job. Clock is ticking, Your Honor. <laughs> bailiff's doing a great job. Smug, what do you got for us? I'm ready to end this. Two okay. round knockout. Can I get exhibit one, please? This is one of my favorite shticks that Joe Walsh has just started on. Uh, Got a call just now from a former supporter of mine in Michigan. He's a big Trump guy. He and I speak every few months. I put respectful nuggets of truth in front of him. He let me know today he's done with Trump. Done. He said Trump doesn't give a damn about the country. I simply thanked him. Every week it happens. Every week a few that I engage with see the light. One voter at a time. I come from MAGA. I will never give up on anyone in MAGA. This is like... Didn't he an, play this exact same thing? This is... Uh, he keeps making up stories of like, oh, so, uh, yeah, for the first time ever, a, a, a guy I know called me and said today, he's done with Trump. This is the most hilarious lie that Joe Walsh keeps trying to get away with, and it's for one reason. For folks on YouTube, you see at the bottom, he got like a million impressions. He will keep 
feeding this lie to libs who want to be like, oh, yeah, Joe Walsh, you know, he comes from MAGA. I, He's convincing. His friends are calling him all across the country being like, you know what? I gave up on Trump today. I will add, Your Honor, that this appears to be in the same category as the first submission. However, in this submission, he was MAGA, not uh, Tea Party. Well, uh, so— um, Wait, hold on. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to register a formal objection for the court's review. Okay. Uh, I believe that if not that exact same tweet, uh, a similar tweet was played by Joe Walsh at some point in this game. The date on this tweet is March 12, 2024. It's as fresh as it gets. Well, I'm just telling you, I believe that this court has heard this argument. This court has heard this argument. However, I went and I, I searched uh, Joe Walsh. I'm, I'm breaking my Twitter ban here uh, in order to support some well it's evidence important here in that you game. have judicial <laughs> uh proxy and yes i do agree a similar take was previously played on the show but in that i've actually learned additional supporting information that i think is pertinent to this court okay he has done this many times it's a hilarious dude shit. i am going back here through okay so this is uh this is february 7th 2022 Former friend and supporter just sent a message. Fuck you, Joe. You're no Seb Gorker or Charlie Kirk. You're not half the men they are. I honestly don't know how to respond. I think I need to call it a night. Uh, 6-15, 2022. Yes, I just had a former supporter tell me lower lowering gas prices is more important than preserving democracy. Uh, I can keep going here. Uh, uh, okay, um, this is 6 2022 Earlier, a former supporter of mine, a MAGA guy, reached out. He was bothered by my hearings and wanted my take. We talked. He listened. By the end, he said, I just can't support Trump again. <laughs> this is just a sustained bit he's done forever. Is Nine it always from Michigan? No, 9-20-2023. Former supporter just sent me a note. Hey, Joe, you and Jim Jordan used to be really good friends. What the hell happened to you? I responded, that's easy. Jordan decided to follow Trump. I decided to follow the rule of law. It's like he does the thing it's where it's so like, good. and then everybody in the coffee Everyone shop clapped. stood up and clapped. It's so this good. is like a repeating bit, dude. Oh, here's another one. 721. Just now, a former supporter. Joe, why'd you leave the GOP? Me, because I believe in freedom. Him. <laughs> Bullshit. Give me one example of Republicans being against freedom. It's just made up stuff. Wait, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. I believe Can we do freedom. a word search on the Michigan component? Because that's where I think that this thing... Well, I don't think any of this... I don't think more of this is going to support your case, yeah. Yeah. This, It just, just gets better and you, better. The Michigan thing, even if I lose... Not since Robert Hur has there been an independent investigator doing such a great job. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm deep in it, It's fellas. so funny. I mean, I, uh, I may lose, but I do... I'm genuinely curious because I feel like there was a supporter in Michigan... Either that or I'm having the weirdest deja vu moment that I've had on this program. I'm not seeing anything in Michigan. This one 20 hours ago was the one you just played. Um, no, I mean, pretty much everything else is... I mean, there's a lot of references to Michigan, mostly in, involving the state and the elections and stuff. Okay. I don't see anything else about my supporter in Michigan, but he definitely does this bit it's so good pretty frequently it's and so good and going back multiple years i mean he really like he found his engagement farm and that's he's it. sticking to it that's what he does and for that reason i'm sorry holmes yeah smug wins again yeah we have a great court oh We've excuse got... me excuse me a last last minute wait a second i found one more Seven twenty-two twenty. this is almost four years ago Spoke to a listener today, undecided conservative from Michigan. From Michigan. Yeah. This is the guy. This... By the end of the call, he agreed that four more years of Trump would be too much for America to take. <laughs> We're making progress. A few voters at a time. Catch the podcast of today's show. Oh, <laughs> okay. What a bit. Okay, it's a good bit. So good. Okay. It's a good bit. You stumbled into the judge... Uh, shall I say, helped with the prosecution. Well, I, 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 I knew we had a fair judge, and I knew he was going to look into the facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It me. was a rigged court. It was very <laughs> activist. This is, I don't, we didn't so much follow the law as we did make it there. Yeah. But you know what? I, it's entertainment, and yep. that's what we aim to do here in the Ruthless Variety program. Uh, on to the next. Congressman Buck. 
So this is the cat from Colorado uh, who, according to Axios, House Republicans are panicking about their shrinking majority after Representative Ken Buck said he will resign at the end of the week. Stunning GOP leadership. Republicans' razor-thin margins have created headaches throughout the 118th Congress, empowering hardliners, causing embarrassing defeats on key votes, and even contributing to the ouster of Kevin McCarthy. Republicans will have 218 seats to Democrats' 213 after Buck leaves, meaning the GOP can lose just two of their members on any given party-line vote. The resignations of McCarthy, Bill Johnson, as well as the expulsion of George Santos and the loss of... Uh, of his seat to Democrats have led the Republicans to this point, a special election in April to replace uh, Representative Brian Higgins uh, in New York will likely add another seat to the Democrats yeah. column. So, um, <laughs> look, it's like, obviously 2022 midterm, like they got the majority, which is the most important part, but it was, uh, we didn't quite get what we all had hoped for in terms of an expansive majority. But I don't recall just like a weekly tick down. Well, here's like the thing this. is, we did get what we wanted in 2022. We got a strong conservative who was sent to save us, George Santos. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was like a rock rib conservative when it came yes, to voting. Right. He always voted with the GOP, never convicted of any crimes. We've got Bob Menendez. With gold bars. He just got indicted again. Of S. Yeah. I mean, the guy's like, you know, the king of getting indicted and selling this country out to foreign powers. That's openly, the funniest part Openly. And, and they asked Chuck Schumer about it. Oh, you know. It's very disappointed. It's a disappointing thing. It's very disappointing. Meanwhile, Republicans are like, oh, gosh, I read the Daily Beast and it said George Santos is bad. Let's cast him out of here. Well, this is what happens, <laughs> but, folks. But you can't resist the, the content. I, I, I mean, right? wasn't yeah. that his line on the yeah. way out? That, that's the thing is like. Why is it that Republicans unilaterally disarm? We'll do a trade. Th it, we'll do a trade. Wait, you're we'll still give you on the, is Santos, Santos for Menendez. When Menendez resigns, we cast out Santos. We can make a deal. I feel like that's fine. We can make a deal. I, but we I'm don't take that. the deal. We'll be like, oh, well, let's cast our guy off. And you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe Democrats will follow our example. Well, how about you? Nope. Can, how about you try to brand Democrats the same way that Democrats brand Republicans when you have a corrupt member of, in your caucus. I mean, that's part of the problem is that nobody's talking about – the only person that I've seen who's actually made a fuss about Bob Menendez is John Fetterman. Yeah. Like I haven't seen anybody up in arms about the fact that this guy sat at the top of the foreign relations panel in the Senate and basically sold access to like Qatar allegedly. Right. Right. I mean, many prosecutors right, are saying. It, it, many <laughs> prosecutors are saying. But it's it's part of the problem when Republicans spend so much time shooting inward that they don't even think to attack Democrats, and that is what we're supposed to do every single day. And hopefully, now that we're done with this Republican presidential primary, we'll start shooting at Joe Biden. Hopefully, when we get past these Senate primaries, rhetorically, rhetorically, speaking. rhetorically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we only yeah, shoot yeah, rhetorically. Yeah, 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 unless satire, we're on satire, a range yeah, or right. in front right. of Merrick uh, Garland, if you're listening, rhetorically, rhetorically, meddling, meddling exactly. animals. Thank you, thank you, Smug. I mean, I mean, politically attacking the Democrat, uh, but like you're, you're right, dude. We Republicans do not do enough to attack Democrats. It is too much in, internal shooting. Everybody is shooting at each other all well, the time. Well, I just like, don't understand. We, I mean, look, when we were. And this is granted is a long time ago, different landscape, different environment, whatever. But we were in a minority when John and I were working in the leadership office in the Senate. And our goal was to try to convince every office that it was in their best interest to follow a messaging line. Because if we all kind of did the same thing in terms of pushing a message, you couldn't ignore it. You'd have to cover it. There wouldn't be anything else for them to cover, knowing that the only thing the media will cover is if there's a break in the dam in any way. And you can say like, well, Re Republican dissent. Mm -hmm. They love that story. And you look, you fast forward now, if, if Republicans were just talking about the her testimony, about what Joe Biden's done to this economy mm -hmm. and about the border mm -hmm. and about crime in the cities and talking about, like, Bob Menendez, mm -hmm. imagine what your coverage would look like. But they're not. Like, they're holding special conference meetings to discuss, like, conference rules where they all disagree about stuff. It's like, dude, you have an obligation at some level 
to represent your party's best interest in conveying what it is that you intend to do to the American people. Like, I, I don't I don't understand how we've gotten this circular firing squad when the presidential primary is over. Like, this is it. This is, we're in a general election. We're a week right. into it. But this circular firing squad has been going on for a while in the House Republican conference. It's happened in the House for a long time. But to be honest with you, I think they might even be better than the Senate right now. I don't think so. And let me tell you why, specifically about Ken Buck here. I mean, like, we oust Kevin McCarthy. I wonder if everybody who thinks that was a good idea still thinks it's a good idea today. We've got a one-seat okay. majority. You want to know who one of those people were who voted to oust Kevin McCarthy? Yeah. Ken Buck. Ken Buck. Ken fucking Buck, mm -hmm. who's like, oh, gosh, oh, geez, this place doesn't work anymore. I got to retire. And it's like, well, you help do it. It's, fuck, it's hot dog meme stuff. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, that isn't, that isn't to say there's anything wrong with Speaker Johnson. Speaker Johnson's been great. But it's like, maybe you're the problem. Maybe it's not Kevin McCarthy or Speaker Johnson that's the problem. Maybe it's that there's some people who refuse to play team ball. Yeah. And that's what it's about under the dome. Like yeah. you're not if you want to if you want to be your your own person, run for president, run for governor. I've, it, got, I've got one. Oh, go, go ahead, John. And I, just, I have one closing thought. I was going to say that the discipline is very difficult for Republicans because you know that every mainstream media outlet will write on a routine basis Republican infighting, and if you attack another Repu if you as a Republican attack another Republican, you will get ink. John McCain taught everybody how this works when he attacked George Bush oh, ahead in of, 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 of the 2000 election. And then all through the early 2000s, there were a bunch of other Republican politicians who saw, oh, I see how John McCain got in the New York Times by attacking another Republican. I'm going to do the same thing. And the cycle just continues and continues and continues. And I know that there are a lot of people who aren't wild about Donald Trump. I don't think that matters. I think that if you didn't like President Trump, you had a chance to have your say. He's our nominee now, and we have to stick together or we're not going to be Democrats. Yeah. We cannot attack each other as Republicans. We just can't do it. Yeah. You and know, uh, one so, seat. Uh, I, I was born in Denver. I love the state of Colorado where Ken Buck is, where he retired in this district. And I'm a bit confused. So um, I know Lauren Boebert oh, got yeah. redistricted out of her district. And then I guess uh, this well, morning. Well, out of it. It just made it much more difficult to win. Like it became, it, I don't know what it was originally. It was R plus something, meaning Republicans had a significant. It was an advantage. R plus five. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, the redistricting made it a, a net D advantage. And my understanding, Michael, you probably know more about this, but my understanding is that instead of running in a seat where you have a partisan disadvantage. She is running in, is it the Buck district? Yeah, so it's, but she has said today, and uh, unless this somehow changes, that she's not going to run in the special. Her plan is to win this seat in November. Which is interesting, right? Because yeah. I think if, just structurally speaking, and somebody would have to correct, one of our listeners knows this. I mean, Constant could tell us over in a minute, but it seems to me like if she were to run in the special, if something happened and you didn't win it, would she be done from the other seat too? Yeah, I think she would have to resign that seat. And and therein lies, I think, the issue, which is like, all right, so like the constituency you elected to do the job for that Because you can't hold two districts yeah. at the same time. Right, right. You're going to leave them in the lurch now? Like, right. I don't. I, I get it. I, I get her whole strategy with the whole thing. No, no, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. The, the easiest way to get to the, Lauren Bobert, welcome on the show. Drop by, explain how it all works. Well, we invited her on after the theater incident. Yeah, well, the Beetlejuice. I think. I think the yeah. invite. The invite is open. I think. She, I think she's coming on. Oh, yeah, good, terrific, on. good. I mean, well, that would have been a hell of a show after the theater incident. I'm just saying, like, nobody does a better job at a, that kind of thing than us. And uh, just ask Ted Cruz after Cancun. Yeah, we well, all had we're a good pre time we're pretty that. theatrical ourselves. Yeah, we can we can have some fun with all kinds of different situations. So, staying in the house. Uh, a very big debate that you've seen everywhere this week that uh, pertains to TikTok. Um, the House yesterday passed a divestment bill. Now, everybody's like shorthanding this as a ban. TikTok ban, yeah. which is not what it is. I mean, essentially what it is is a, a bill that would require TikTok to be sold from ByteDance which is a Chinese national-operated company. Um, and if you know any history about 
China and the way that China works with their, I mean, it's basically a state-owned operation. And there's been a lot of things that we've talked about on this program about the dangers of, of TikTok as it relates to this very thing mm -hmm. in having a medium that connects directly to millions upon millions of American youth that honestly is, is propaganda, right? It's what the Chinese government would want you to see. And so there's been a lot of, lot of discussion about all of this. Uh, it turned out like this came up for a committee vote last week, and it was 50 to nothing, right? 50 or 55 mm -hmm. to nothing, 50, something yeah. like that. Um, and then you saw a bunch of folks sort of coming out, led by like Rand Paul, uh, and then ultimately President Trump, who uh, expressed skepticism mm -hmm. in various forms about whether this is the right strategy or not. Well, anyway, yesterday the whole House took advantage of, of this vote and put 352 members to take up and pass this legislation, which is a big deal. I mean, I think it essentially means that TikTok would be offline uh, until they can find a buyer to buy out Chinese interests. Which, I mean, already Rumble has come forward as offering to be that buyer. Well, is that right? Rumble, yeah. Rumble would buy TikTok? R Rumble I mean, has come forward and they huge. said that they'd be happy to do it, which, I mean, if you wanted a platform that that's, a big number. Yeah, that's about free speech and is based in the U.S., there you go. I've, already, I've also heard rumors that uh, Bobby Kotick who had run Activision uh, successfully, I mean, the stock price did great under him, uh, expressed interest in being the CEO of a domestic, uh, domestically owned TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, me, myself, I think I have a lot of questions. I want to, I want, you know. I'd like to hear your questions. Jeff Yass, if you're listening, <laughs> I'd like to have a conversation. <laughs> you know? So, 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 I mean, the reason this is very funny, and if this is all new to you, I apologize, but the reason this is very funny is that there is a direct correlation between the lawmakers who have voiced the loudest opposition to any sort of divestment of TikTok with the relationship that said lawmakers have with a gentleman by the name of Jeff Yass. Who, uh, from my understanding, he's a smart guy and a very nice guy. <laughs> and, you know, we can chat. I can give you my bank routing number. Yes. <laughs> he's very available and for sale. And so you're, you're reserving the balance of your judgment yeah. until you hear from Mr. Yass. And that's Yash. the thing, you know, you always want to hear all sides of the issue. And I think he <laughs> probably has a compelling argument, you know? With a couple commas in it. Just a smart, <laughs> smart, a smart businessman. So, like, if you look at the lawmakers who were, who were voicing opposition to this, it, were, it was people who Jeff Yass was very active in their FEC report, shall yeah. we say. Vivek Ramaswamy Super PAC, right. for example. I, and and the, my favorite of the Ramaswamy thing was, like, Vivek uh, saying, absolutely, we need to ban TikTok. And then, like— He called it digital fentanyl, which is just, yeah. like, a— Digital of a title, mm. and then and then there's like a, a super pack FEC report and date of like a country, and then his next thing is appearing with Jake Paul. Yeah, on TikTok. On TikTok, yeah. and then he's like, "No, we can't." He, he gave get him, rid of I think, like four million dollars, right? Is is what he gave to the? I don't remember the figure, but it was a lot of money. But there's an awful like, like, like. I mean, I'll do it for half as much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's I'm very not greedy. He, I'll do it for two. Smug treat. He's uh, very reasonable. It's a good deal, and like you need me now, now more than ever. <laughs> On the show, if you can get this in by the end, yeah. you should probably take care of that. So anyway, that's the overarching situation. It rem remains to be seen what's going to happen in the United States Senate on this thing, but there's a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. You any thoughts on it? On the momentum? No, just on like this whole thing. Um, well, I think number one, I think we're going to see, and we talked about this on on Tuesday's episode. I don't think this is the first time we're going to end up in a situation where, you know, United States Congress and a president has to address a fundamental weakness we have vis-a-vis -vis China and the issue of technology. Like we're just going to see it over and over and over again on yep. things like AI and all the all these sort of you even emerging brought quantum, like Duncan, you were making good points. Yeah, it's just like this is the fight of the future. And I'm all for free speech and free markets, but when it comes, there's no to, free. This is not a free speech. But yeah, when it when it it might be, and, and that and that. <laughs> <laughs> <It might be. laughs> but when, when you're coming, when you're talking about an app that is controlled by the CCP and the Chinese military, an app in which they ban in their own country, but they're fine exporting it to us, like 
I have no problem banning that thing or making them divest or whatever. You're going to have to, by the way, Smug, you're going to have to erase a lot of previous comments if Mr. Yass gets in. Well, that's what the money's for. (laughs) (laughs) I guess nobody else It's like the Stalin photo, you know? Just disappear. It's like, (laughs) bam, TikTok. And then they're like, we love TikTok. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I have we'll, some questions. We we'll, <laughs> we will we will know only when he's on TikTok with Jake Paul yeah. doing doing dances. Yeah, him him and Mike Tyson. My, my yeah. favorite Look my that. favorite like uh, political ingenuity way of getting out of pure hypocrisy is what you just said. Like I have questions. I've got questions. And like I'm not sure the implementation is right. And hey, no, this. that gives me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could make this a poorly drafted for 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 two <laughs> million dollars. Let's take a beat for two million dollars. I'll let Mike Tyson punch me on TikTok. Oh, you know, wow. and it'll bring more people to the app, Jeff. It's good for everybody, I mean, except for except for me. But I'll get over it. <laughs> two two mil, two you, mil. You would do it? Oh yeah. Have you seen the videos of him? Lately? Oh yeah. I mean, I'll wear one of those, like you know, the boxer helmet things. I'm not gonna just. I mean, straight up taking that right to the punch. fucking schnoz. Totally, dude. I I will. To- I'll lean out of, into the punch so it doesn't just kill me. What, are you a stunt man? Dude, I'm not going to take a direct... Oh, if Jeff, I'll say for three, I'll take a direct. <laughs> 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 oh, well, if you could talk to our friends at Club for Growth, maybe they can arrange something. I'm all ears. All I'd right. be happy to have a discussion. All right. The media is great at distracting you from things you should actually be focused on. While the media was debating Taylor Swift... China, Russia, Brazil, India, and South Africa, basically half the world's population created BRICS. That's B-R-I-C-S, which is a massive economic alliance that's already talking about replacing the dollar with their own currency. The consequences of this could be dire, with your 401k accounts losing value if BRICS is successful. Why risk your personal savings? Diversify your financial future. Invest in the one thing that has proven stable for centuries, gold. From today's sponsor, Allegiance Gold. They've earned the highest trust ratings in the precious metals industry, and their relationships are based on integrity, expertise, and impeccable service. Go to protectwithruthless.com today or call 855-510-GOLD. Right now, get up to 5000 in free silver with a qualifying purchase. Don't rely on promises of ever-increasing stock values or assurances the economy will remain stable forever. Protect your financial future today. Protectwithruthless.com. That's protectwithruthless.com or call 855-510-GOLD. So we want some variety? Always. So we're coming up on March Madness, which means hack madness, by the way. That's right. And so that's coming up very soon. We'll announce where the, all that is. And then you'll recall that we do a big selection show where we announce 64. I think it's 66 with the play-in game now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of the competitors uh, who are the worst journalists in politics. Biggest hacks. The mm-hmm. biggest hacks. In, in, and that is a fun – if you're new to this program within the last year and you didn't get a chance to listen to it last year, go back and take a, a listen. Because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get a little preview of what's to come, and you're gonna love every. I, second I don't want to say it's better than the NCAA tourney, but it's better than the NCAA. It might tourney. be. It might be, and I'm a huge fan of the NCAA tournament. So, and apparently, so is a whole bunch of people, uh, as McDaniel always does. Study finds. Study finds. Study finds. Study finds. Uh, March is here, and that means one thing: college basketball fans are about to tune into the rest. Tune out of the rest of the world and in for days and days on this basketball tournament. In fact, a new poll finds March Madness fans will spend a day and a half, 36 hours, completely consumed by the 2024 NCAA tournament. Here's what they do that's brilliant that nobody else gets. They start this thing on a Thursday Mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then it rolls all the way through the day and into the West Coast. And so, like, you fall asleep at 1 a.m. watching the last games. So, like, Thursday and Friday, in particular, of March Madness, the greatest days in sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so fun. Mm -hmm. And if you have, like, a crew of of people you love hanging out with, you you fill out your brackets and you just like it, 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 there's no chance where it gets done. No chance. Yeah, I mean, it said here that, uh, you know, the title is March Madness fans already planning to skip work. And Ashbrook's proof positive. 
Like the guy jumped the gun. He already has skipped one day of work. <laughs> Who knows how many will happen throughout the tournament? I you're leaning That's in the on bet the I want to place. Not on a specific team, but how many days is Ashbrook going to miss? <laughs> Well, we're going to follow all of that because we know we'd love to do it. I think we had Dakich on here last mm-hmm. year. Maybe that, we'll have him again. Maybe we'll have him on this month to give us his uh, rundown of what he thinks is going to happen. Um, so, all right, you guys hear, see the story about the rats? Yes. The rats thing is absolutely unbelievable. So this is from The Guardian. They're all high, quote, unquote. <laughs> Louisiana police say rats eating marijuana in evidence room. <laughs> Cops in New Orleans are on the tail of a brazen gang of narcotics traffickers who broke into the evidence room at police headquarters and pilfered all the pot. A swarm of rodents with a hankering for the high life. Hmm. That's just gifted writing yep. right there. I'm sure it was the rats. Uh, the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sure it was the That's a great discussion. <laughs> Could be the journos. Uh, the rats are eating our marijuana. They're all high. Ann Kirkpatrick, superintendent of the city's police department, told a city council meeting on Monday. Can you imagine that's the city council thing? Just like, I don't know. We got a lot of rats and they're all fucked up. Uh, the chief's ratting out of the prime suspects was part of her pitch to counselors to fund a move of her offices ah. into, oh, I see what's going on here. Yep. Into a new premises in B's, Big Easy's downtown, according to mm. NOLA.com. Okay. She told the city's criminal justice committee that the decrepit mid-city criminal justice building in which the police department is currently housed, it was built in 1968, is no longer fit for the job. And her evidence for that, super high rats i think the criminal justice building is just fine just fine i've seen the departed <laughs> you know i've seen mafia movies yeah. there's always a rat in the police department yep <laughs> you know this is just par for the course when it comes to to fighting crime in our nation cities i think our law enforcement deserves state-of-the-art facilities and <laughs> they absolutely deserve a new facility especially after what they've been through in the last few years and i think that they should get some separately from the rats they should have the best that New, that uh, that that they have to offer. If them. I could guess, and you know, this is a joke. This is satire. This is not an actual statement. This has no legal holding. Why don't the cops just buy a new building with the pot they sold? <laughs> We're supposed to believe rats ate all the pot. They're like, oh, you know, like we don't believe kids when they say the dog ate my homework, but we're going to believe cops when they say the rats ate the weed? Like, come on, man. Yeah, very, very suspicious this story comes out after Mardi Gras. Yeah, uh, very and, suspicious. And, and we're talking about New Orleans. These rats could be eating beignets, yeah. you know, and po' boys. You think they're going to go eat a bunch of weed? No, no one buys this. I want to stick Who with knows? Th- maybe, maybe, I'm not saying it. Maybe uh, this Kirkpatrick could be on the take. Who knows? <laughs> Demanding a new building, being like, unrelated, uh, I want a new office. Come on, man. Like, that's the most obvious thing I've ever heard. But the article, Everything I said is a joke. It's not true. Here's Don't the other sue. thing, man. The article cites a case in India, in Uttar Pradesh, where rats did the same thing, and also in Buenos Aires. I'll tell you what. I guarantee in both those cases, well, the, the cops sold it all Rats are known dude. drug like, traffickers. <laughs> And in both those cases, I guarantee it was sold. Like, let's be real here. Yeah, no <laughs> drug traffickers. But here, here's my like, larger point in, in defense of the rats. Haven't we basically legalized this shit everywhere anyway? No. What's, what, what, what is it on the rats? Well, I mean, the rats are point. just doing what everybody else in New Orleans is doing. Yeah, they, they waited until it was legal. <laughs> <laughs> they've, been, they've been watching the laws come down <laughs> they're like don't mind if i do oh <laughs> uh, lastly on the program we've got a great graphic for you this is graphic three spaghetti. if we could pop this sucker up uh this is an amazing deal from a guy named rob gilmore who climbed mount kilimanjaro with a ruthless Flag and the picture that you're looking at, if you're a YouTube subscriber, is him uh, and uh, somebody else. I don't know if it's a friend or wife or, or husband. I don't, I don't know what it is, but he's got a ruthless flag on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah, and the what an says, amazing deal. Ruthless on the roof of Africa, March fifth, twenty twenty four. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Mm. I mean, huge salute. I mean, the guy climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. What we, a stud. We got to tweet this out from the ruthless account. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That cat, first of all, there's no chance I could do that. No. I mean, zero. Yeah. Zero point zero. But the fact that he did it with a, and then packed a ruthless flag That's in the, the back of it. That's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. It's one of the coolest things that I've ever seen in my life. We should we should tweet it out. I've got a potential status update. Um, here's what the post should say. Ruthless has colonized Africa. <laughs> 
<laughs> land, well, land, land acknowledgments forthcoming. I, I'll, I'll make a deal. <laughs> We're now colonizers. <laughs> if he gets that banner to the top of Everest, I'll tweet it out for him. Nice. That's a good deal, man. You can do Everest. You gotta tweet. Well, you this gotta out. tweet Kilimanjaro. Wait, you're telling me he has to he has to try to man, die on I, Everest I, just I to get to the Jeff? Yes, and right. now it's like <laughs> Jesus. This, this guy's crazy. price. I think you got it in you, Rob. Oh my god. I believe. Well, what a stud. Thanks for doing it, Rob. You're a legitimate minion and friend of the program. Cannot wait to interact with you. Shoot us a note once you get this and you hear this because we are so thankful that you've done that and provided a backdrop for all of us. Fellas, with that, on a good Thursday to you, I think we did it. I think so. Absolute banger of an episode. John, again, shout out, Rob. That is incredible climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. And thank you to all our minions. So don't forget, subscribe on the YouTube. And until next time, minions, keep the faith, hold the line and own the libs. We'll see you on Tuesday. Stay ruthless. <laughs> <laughs>